Uh, <laughs> so anyways, we have um, – today I've got Paul from VanityAndLies.com um, hanging out with me here on a live video. This is something we're, we're kind of – it's really kind of a test. Uh, really, it's our first time to do this, and uh, we're going to see how it works. So, But he's with me, VanityAndLies.com. And the reason I asked him to be with me today – um, was because of, I'm going to pull it up here on my phone, because of an article that he has written. And now, Paul, I don't know if you remember this, and I, I haven't even talked to you about this until just now, so this is like a impromptu, no script here. But it, it's been a couple years, but you and I had an exchange of Facebook messages a while back about this. Uh, I think it was about two and a half years ago, two years ago, whatever. You We we were talking about this via Facebook, and and the reason I remember it so clearly is because I was actually, it was like I was in Torah and I was like walking out of junk as fast as possible, but I was still leading worship at one Christian church in their youth group. And, uh, and so I was actually at a church service in the back. We had just played and, uh, in the songs that we would sing, like we, we wouldn't sing songs about Jesus or anything like that. Um, and you know, people started to kind of catch on and that's the reason this was the last church that I was, that I was a part of, but people were kind of catching on like, wait a second, what's going on here? Uh, but I remember having a Facebook, you may not remember that, but I remember talking with you back and forth for, I mean, it it was a couple day, like kind of back and forth conversation about this topic. And so when I saw you post this on your new website, uh, I don't know, a few weeks back, a couple weeks ago, I don't know how long it's been. Um, I, uh, or you shared it on Facebook anyways. I, I remembered that conversation. I was like, man, I've got to I've got to contact him again, and we need we need to talk about this because there's not very many people talking about this um, in the way that you you wrote you wrote it in your article. The mark of the beast, right? So those of you can see the the image there, you know, straight up evil. That's 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 the mark of the beast, right, Paul? That picture. Well, it's red. That's the color of the <laughs> devil, so it must be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so that's the mark of the beast, not not really. We today we're going to discuss the mark of the beast. We're going to kind of use Paul's article as a maybe possible outline for our discussion and if you have any comments, questions, concerns, you can leave them in the chat room um and uh yeah. And so that's that's how that goes. If you're at ocmrlive.com, go ahead and jump in the chat there and tell people who might visit uh to to uh, you know, watch the video and they can join the chat on the video page. There's there's a way to click on the YouTube link there, I think, and you can pull up the the video page and all that. So so that's that's kind of the the intro. The uh, so I'm going to pull this back up here. So so Paul, this this mark of the beast. This is something that is like, I mean, it's it's a pretty intense topic. I mean, it's it's something that people have been concerned about for a while. And especially in, in the days we live in today with, you know, the RFID chipping and the, uh, the I mean, I, tattoos and I mean, every, all of these crazy, horrendous, devilish things that are out there, uh, we, uh, right, we, we, have to, we have to recognize and wrestle with the actual truth. So Mark of the Beast is something pretty intense and people are all around the world, I think, are there's, that's the key phrase, Paul. I, I used it if you noticed. <laughs> I noticed that. <laughs> All around the world, uh, people are you know, having a hard time with this. Oh, do I have the mark? I don't want the mark. Who He has the mark. What's the mark? How do, how do we know what the mark is? I don't want to receive that mark. So today, that's what we're going to talk about. So tell me kind of a little bit of a, actually, first, if you want, share a little background about your, uh, maybe your, your walk in Torah and, and how you've come to vanityandlies.com and maybe even this article. Well, I am a brand new Torah baby. So I just stumbled into Torah about four years ago when my wife and I relocated from the United States to Bolivia, which is her homeland. We were looking, you know, we were both Christians. We were both, uh, you know, had our churches in the United States. We came here, set out to look for a church, and we were coming up pretty dry. We couldn't find anything that appealed to either of us, much less both of us. So we were here and we weren't going to church, and that was, you know, five years ago. And so we, you know, one day she asked me a question, which now she doesn't even remember asking me, but she said, you know, baby or love of my life or beautiful, whatever she called me that day. I mean, they're all good. But she said, you know, 
now that we don't go to church, what makes us Christians? And I mean, you know, as a, you know, stone cold hardened experience, you know, no longer green behind the ears Christian, that's a real easy thing to say. Well, ah, you know, we, we have faith and we have his spirit and, you know, you, we can just spout out the catchphrases. But listening to her question, we weren't doing anything any different than our neighbors, than the people on the street. We were not anything unique or set apart or holy. There was nothing remarkable about us. We were just people. And, you know, if you asked any of them, they all say they're Christians too. So, you know, we started thinking and I was like, yeah, you know, there's got to be more to it than just saying you're a Christian. So she and I both planned on studying the Bible. And we weren't, you know, studying in a group context. We weren't going through somebody's website leading us and guiding us. She opened her Bible. I opened my Bible. And we just started reading. And then every couple of days or so, you know, one of us would discover something. And we'd compare notes and, you know, get together on it. And then go back to our respective corners and keep reading. By the time we were done, after a few months, we were pretty sure we were about to invent a new cult because we had come up with these really strange conclusions and they had led us to, let's just call it a religion that was no longer Christianity. So we thought, okay, we must have just turned ourselves into Jews. And then we started researching Judaism and we realized, well, no, we're not exactly that either. You know, we're just loster than a lost guy on a lost thing. That's all there is to it. <laughs> and, um, you know, while we were continuing our studies, I had stumbled onto a, a church in South Africa, and don't ask me the website, I don't remember, it was years ago, but I was reading through their articles of faith, and baby, baby, get in here. These guys believe the same stuff that we're starting to think. And one by one, we started discovering that, you know, we weren't the only people in the world that came to the conclusion that the Old Testament and the New Testament of the Bible were both equally applicable in our lives today. And the strangest thing was, you know, all of these people around the world actually had a more homogenous doctrine without any centralization. They didn't belong to the same organization that, you know, constantly indoctrinates them every week. Everyone was just scattered all over the place left to their own supervision, and somehow they had a very cohesive doctrine. And that's when we started to realize, oh, seek and you shall find. I get it now. Um, and so, you know, a few years later, I've, you know, I've got a head full of this stuff and a burden that, you know, I was lost and looking for this for years, and I never figured it out. I wonder how many other people want this too. So, you know, the least I could do was put up a website and try to explain it to some people. And, you know, that's that's what Vanity and Lies came from. So that's, that's where it is. That's really awesome. That's, uh, I you know, it's it's great. If you guys haven't checked out his website, then then do it. Go to vanityandlies.com. Um, and you can you can find the article that we're going to discuss today, The Mark of the Beast. But you can also find a lot of other great articles. So uh, I recommend that you do that. If you are, um, you know... Uh, joining us, you can you can hop into the chat room at the YouTube page. I think you click on the little link at the bottom of the video to the YouTube, and that'll take you over to our watch page, and you can actually uh, jump in the YouTube chat. I do have the OCMR live chat up, so if you prefer to chat there, then we can do that as well. It just it'll you know make me have to monitor more than one thing. So. Uh, but, uh, that's, that's no worry. So, so we've got Paul vanity and lies. He's, he's, you know, kind of a similar story, Paul, to what, uh, to what I think a lot of us have this idea of church starting to recognize the Bible says maybe some slightly different things than what we've always been taught. Uh, you know, started to recognize maybe the Bible is, is actually true before the separator page, you know, old Testament, new Testament, like that. Is it not just, it's not just a storybook back there, but there's actually like some, some oomph to it. Um, and, uh, and then that kind of honest, I think something that's very important here is that alone feeling you had, right? Like you, you've, you, came, you came across this, this, this group that was 
teaching some of this stuff and you're like, Hey, we're not the only crazy people in the world. You know, uh, we, there's, there's like a, you know, there's a, a ton of crazy people in the world. <laughs> Exactly. A ton of crazy people. Uh, you know, and, and we talked about this yesterday in our Shabbat group, but how like, it's crazy, but the people who are waking up to this, um, it seems as if within the last probably 10, 15 years, there's been a surge in this waking up. Um, but but it's it's like a, it's like this weird group of people all over the world that is kind of joining together through Facebook and various different social media outlets and and it's like we are all kind of, in, in a weird way, you know, scattered, right? Which brings up a whole lot of other topics we could discuss, you know. But but it's interesting because we are all, you know, I mean, you're you're in the middle of South America. I'm in the middle of North America or the United States, anyways. And we've got people that you know that tune in from from Israel and from you know West Coast, East Coast, United States. We've got people in South Africa and Philippines and Australia. I mean, all over the world who are who are coming to this realization that, wait a second, the Bible's true. <laughs> all of it, all of it is. And, uh, and so, you know, you do feel kind of crazy when, when you start believing that because you're in a culture all over the world that doesn't necessarily believe that's the case. So, so that's awesome. And, and the good thing about that, that I think regarding our topic today, the mark of the beast is the Bible is true. And the best thing about that is that, that it, it gives us the information we need to determine life, to determine even prophecy, uh, to determine, you know, it gives us, it gives us answers. And, and this Mark of the Beast thing, as we kind of started talking about, is a, is a hairy topic. There are, I, I mean, I'm guessing, you know, thousands of opinions <laughs> out there. There's some, there's some mainstream <laughs> thoughts, but, but thousands of opinions, and everybody kind of has it in the back of their mind what they think the mark of the beast is, or possibly even who the beast is, right? Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, and, and and we all know that President Obama is the Antichrist, right? Because now he's yeah, now he's been as much as Donald Trump is the Messiah, absolutely. <laughs> 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 so, so we all know, you know, I mean, it, it's just crazy, and and I, and I do, I say we all know that, totally, absolutely joking, and I think the reason I joke about it is because I think the vast majority of people are very unsure about this specific topic. Absolutely. And so I wanted to talk about that. Now, now you, you have, uh, and, and the reason that I am so excited about this topic is because when I, when I came across, I don't know how we started talking two and a half years ago. I don't know why it was brought up, but I remember a conversation and I remember showing it to my wife on my phone. I'm like, you, you kind of your same response. We're not the only crazy people that believe this. <laughs> If I remember correctly, you had sent me a message telling me I had pretty eyes, and it just went from there. Um, and then, you know, eventually we got started on that topic, and uh, two and a half years later, I guess it's finally come to fruition. Tractor um, beam, you know, yeah. One of one of the reasons that um, we have, you know, let's just call it markology, because for a lot of people, studying things like the mark of the beast is really you know what's in the front seat uh, for them and you know they kind of put the rest of the bible in the back seat so you know there really is uh you know basically a whole i don't think you would go as far as to call it a science because there's no real scientific principle uh you know associated with any of this type of study but you know it's let's just call it what it is it's a bunch of theories and you know, they're night and day one from another. And a lot of them are pretty harebrained. A lot of them, you know, sound like they came out of uh, Blade Runner or Star Trek or something like that. And, you know, we have to kind of understand where how we got here. Um, you know, we were born, most of us, in Babylon. We grew up listening to fairy tales based on the Bible. And we heard those fairy tales for so long that they became ingrained in us and they became the basis of our reality and our interpretation. So how were we raised? We don't know anything about the Old Testament. Um, you know, we all think, well, you know, we know the story of Noah and the ark and Moses and coming out of Egypt, but we really haven't just sat down and been, you know, 